everyone and welcome back for a new project. Today I will be showing you how I did this sabi blouse that I'm wearing right now. This blouse is typically the kind of project that I'm not gonna anticipate too much. What actually happens is that I'm gonna go and find a fabric that I like, I get inspired by it and then in half a second I know exactly what I want to do with it. And that's what happened with this blouse. I was in Paris beginning of December and I went to this very cool place called Coupon de Saint-Pierre. For those of you who are not French or who do not know what it is, I'm gonna put the link in the description down below, but you have to know that Coupon de Saint-Pierre is like an institution. You have to go there. If you're ever going to Paris, you have to visit Coupon de Saint-Pierre. I bought quite a lot of fabric there, to be honest, <laughs> but I found especially this fabric, which was super light and has this very cool floral patterns with kind of, I don't know if you can see, but it has kind of gold lines in it, so I really liked it. And I paid something like five euros for three meters, so it was definitely a good deal. Back in Luxembourg, I started drafting my patterns and Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of how I drafted it. There was not too much of a challenge on my side. It doesn't have to be too adjusted, so I, I think I was done with the pattern something like 20 or 30 minutes. But I've got footage of how I've sewn the blouse, so this is what I'm gonna show you today. So first I cut all the pieces in the fabric and I also chose a thicker dark green fabric which I'm going to be using as a lining for the shoulder parts, the button tabs and the cuffs. I've pinned the lining on the floral fabric right sides facing each other for the shoulder parts and I've sewn all around the neckline. Then I took the pins off, cut the excess fabric and flipped the lining back on the right side. I chose to secure the two pieces by hand to make sure that they would not be moving when I'm going to be using them later on. Then I moved to the back piece. My first step was to actually baste the pleat in the center of the back piece to make sure that it would not be slippery or moving. I pinned the shoulder piece on the back piece, right sides facing each other, and then I sew them together, cut the excess fabric and did the zigzag stitch all along. I did pretty much the same thing on the front piece, so I've pinned all of the, I mean, the shoulder parts on the front piece, um, sew the pieces together, cut the excess fabric and did my same zigzag stitch. The button tab is probably the trickiest part of this project, especially as I don't have a lot of footage to show you and I made my life a lot harder by using two layers of fabric for this project. What I actually did here is to draw the shape of the button tab that I wanted on the lining fabric and then pin it on the actual floor fabric. I secured the two of them together and I cut the excess fabric. I have pinned each button tab part on each side of the front opening and sew them together. I realized that this step would have definitely required a bit more footage, but actually it was just getting really late at night and I stopped filming, so... If you want a specific tutorial on this part, just let me know. Then I flipped the button tabs inwards and hand stitched them in place. Using my measuring tape, I've put pins where I want the buttons to be. I've decided that I'm going to be using only five buttons and that they would be pretty small. 
Using my special foot, I have sewn all of the buttonholes. I opened the buttonholes using a seam ripper and I've sewn the buttons in place on the other button tab. And with this step, you are pretty much done with the front part and the collar. I've cut the sleeves in the fabric based on the patterns that I had created. I pinned each sleeve on the bodice right sides facing each other and sew the two pieces together. As usual, I cut the excess fabric and did a zigzag stitch all along. I have pinned the sleeves and the sides right sides facing each other and then I just have to sew along the sides and under the arms. Wait for the end of this video to have a special tip for this part because I feel like this was definitely not the smartest thing to do. And again I cut the excess fabric and did a zigzag stitch all along to secure it. For the cuffs, I have drawn two rectangles in the lining fabric. On the XC pattern that I've published, I suggested that these rectangles should be 23 cm long, but I strongly advise you to check beforehand if these cuffs would be actually wide enough so that you can slide your hand through. So do not hesitate to add one or two centimeters to make sure that it would be easy for you to put your hand through it. If you have to choose, they would rather be too wide than too narrow, because if it's too narrow, then you just cannot do anything with it at all. I have cut the excess fabric around my rectangles and pinned them on my floral fabric. Again, I have secured the two pieces by hand stitching them together. I've pleated the bottom part of the sleeves and pinned them on the cuffs, right sides facing each other. I sew the sleeves and the cuff together, cut the excess fabric, I folded the cuffs inwards and secured them by hand stitching them into place. For the hem of the blouse, I folded the fabric over twice and top stitched it in place. And that was done! For those of you who recognize this blouse, I was already wearing it in the Trinity skirt, so the very easy pattern skirt video that I made a couple of days ago. I will put the link over here. Overall, I was very pleased with this project. I really, really like the blouse and I, I think I finished it in something like five hours, so I was pretty happy with the general project. If you are interested in getting this pattern and making this blouse, I've got two tips for you. The first one is that I made my life a lot harder by using two layers of fabric. If you want to make something more simple, then maybe choose an initial fabric which is going to be a little bit less transparent, a little bit less sheer, so that you can actually be using only one layer of it. And if your fabric is still a little bit like slippery, kind of a little bit silky and stuff, then I recommend to use this kind of product. In Europe it's called Fabulon. Wherever you are, you probably have similar types of products. 
it is actually the spray that you're gonna apply on shirts especially the color parts to make them a little bit stiffer so that's exactly what we want to do here so once you've bought and washed your fabric you're gonna spray it and iron it and then it's gonna make your fabric less slippery and a little bit stiffer which is a lot easier to sew on my second tip would be regarding the sleeves what I did was to construct the sleeves and once the sleeves were finished I pleated them and added the cuffs. This is definitely not the easiest option. And if you're like me, if you've got teeny tiny wrists, you're making your life a lot harder. Don't do it. What I would suggest is that either at the complete beginning or once you've sewn the sleeves on the bodice, you actually pleat the bottoms of the sleeves and you sew the cuffs in. This way, when you are finishing of sewing like the sides and the underarm area, you can actually go on with sewing the cuffs with them. And then you just have to fold the cuffs over and hand stitch them in place. And you're done and I think it's a lot easier this way. And I'm really sorry that I didn't have more footage to show you on the button tab part because I know that this one is probably the most complicated part of this project. If you are interested in me making a separate tutorial for this specific part, please let me know. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comment section down below, to put a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Feel also free to visit my Etsy and Instagram in the description down below. Thank you again for watching and see you all very soon. Bye!